Hey there, did you know that slow cooking in the spring and summer is actually one of my favorite methods of cooking just because you are absolutely able to beat the heat. So today I am going to be showing you six new dump and go easy slow cooker recipes that my family loves. Let's get to my kitchen and start cooking. This chicken with wild rice and vegetables has to be one of my all-time favorite slow cooker meals ever. To get it started off, I'm just going to dice up my vegetables, just an onion, two sticks of celery, and three large carrots. I'm going to bring my vegetables over to my slow cooker, just add the veggies right in there. Next, you're going to want to add in about a tablespoon of minced garlic, along with three cups of chicken broth. Next, add in your chicken. I'm just using about a pound of chicken breast and I did cube the chicken into kind of like smaller bite-sized pieces and then for the seasonings add in a dash of salt and pepper and then a teaspoon of dried thyme and a teaspoon of dried oregano now I'm going to add in one cup of wild rice you want to make sure it's the regular wild rice not like instant rice just regular wild rice then I added in one cup of frozen peas I'm going to give this a really good stir and this is going to cook on high for about two and a half hours and I know sometimes when rice is cooked in the slow cooker it comes out mushy and not appetizing at all but seriously if you follow this recipe it will come out amazing 10 out of 10 you will love it but once my rice was tender and the chicken was cooked through I added in one cup of shredded cheddar cheese I let the cheese melt down and then I served this up and if you're not a huge cheese fan you could of course always leave the cheese out but here's my plate of food this is so good and flavorful. My entire family loved this meal. I actually made this over at my parents' house and served it up for them over there. We had some extended family there too that really enjoyed this dinner. We served it alongside of a salad and a dinner roll. Now we're making this chipotle chicken and this one might surprise you just a little bit. So to begin, I have a can of chipotle peppers right here in adobo sauce and you're only going to want to use about two of those chipotle peppers for this recipe. I'm just cutting those peppers into smaller pieces. If you're wondering what I did with the rest of the can of the peppers, I just put it in a bag and froze it for future recipes. But I put the smaller cut pieces of peppers in my slow cooker along with one yellow onion that I diced, an 8 ounce can of tomato sauce, a tablespoon of minced garlic, then for my seasonings a teaspoon of oregano, about 2 teaspoons of chili powder, a teaspoon of cumin, 2 teaspoons of salt, and a half a teaspoon of pepper. Then give this a really good stir and add in your two large chicken breasts and I do want to let you know for all of my recipes today if you want to double the recipes for more people you can or of course you could half the recipes for less people but I'll coat the chicken in this sauce and then this will cook on low for about six to seven hours or until your chicken's cooked through. But now that my chicken is cooked through, I am just going to shred it up. I'm just shredding mine with an electric hand mixer to make everything super duper easy, but I'm just shredding it in the sauce and then I am serving it up. I served mine over a bed of white rice with a little bit of cheese and sliced onions over the top, but you could serve this in tacos you could serve this as burrito meat you could serve this like as nachos any way you want to serve this chipotle chicken you certainly can it's delicious now we're making this beef ragu and I've never made anything like this on my channel in the past so to my slow cooker I'm adding in a 28 ounce can of crushed tomatoes. Next I'm going to add in a 6 ounce can of tomato paste. Then you're going to want to add in your seasonings. So it's just about a tablespoon of salt, a teaspoon of pepper, a teaspoon of dried thyme, and a teaspoon of dried oregano. Next go ahead and add in your 2 and 3 fourths cup of beef broth along with just a tablespoon of minced garlic and then this is the fun part I'm adding in two large carrots that I diced right now next I'm going to add in two sticks of celery that I also diced and then one large yellow onion that I diced and then lastly one tablespoon of brown sugar give this a stir
Now I'm going to add in about three pounds of chuck roast. I did cut my chuck roast into large pieces and I removed any big pieces of fat on the chuck roast. I'm going to give this a stir and then this will cook on low for about eight hours. Here we are eight hours later. I'm just going to remove the chuck roast pieces and I'll shred them into smaller pieces and then I'm just going to remove any like pieces of fat on the chuck roast right now. Then add it right back into your slow cooker and give it a stir then put the lid on the slow cooker and then let this cook for an additional 20 minutes. I love serving this beef ragu over these Amish egg noodles. I just find them at Walmart, my grocery store, and they're a little bit more money than regular noodles, but they're super good in this recipe. So I'm just going to boil up part of this bag, and then once the noodles were tender, I served this up. I just served the beef ragu over those noodles, and seriously, that ragu is so rich and delicious. You will absolutely love it. And then I was craving sea Caesar salad on this night, so I just made a Caesar salad on the side. This one is for all of my meatless meal friends. We are making this vegetable pot pie now. So we're going to cut up our veggies first. I'm dicing one yellow onion. Next, I'll dice up some medium-sized golden potatoes. And then the next veggie I'm using is two medium-sized zucchinis. Just cut those into half moons. Now into this bowl, I'm going to add in about a tablespoon of salt and two teaspoons of pepper. Next, add in a tablespoon of minced garlic. Then add in one can of cream of mushroom soup and a can of cream of celery soup. Then for the rest of the seasonings, add in about two teaspoons of dried thyme, two teaspoons of dried oregano, and then give this a whisk. Now I'm going to slowly add in about a cup and a half of vegetable broth. You do want to add it in slowly and whisk it while you're adding it in so this sauce could be nice and smooth in the end. But after I was finished with that, I set the sauce to the side. Now over to my slow cooker, I'm adding in the veggies that we cut up earlier. Next, I'm going to add in about a 12 ounce bag of frozen peas and carrots. You could also add in any other type of veggies you like, but these are the veggies that I felt like doing for this day. Next, I added the sauce right in there and then you will give this a really good stir. Cook this on low for about six hours. When my slow cooker only had about 30 minutes left of cooking, I started on the biscuits for on top. To this bowl, I added in two cups of Bisquick baking mix and two thirds cup of milk. I'll give this a stir and let this combine. Now back over to my slow cooker, I am just going to give this a really good stir. My house was smelling really good at this point. I am just going to drop spoonfuls of that biscuit dough all over the top. Then I'll let this continue to cook on on low for about 30 more minutes or until the biscuits are nice and fluffy and cooked through. You will not be missing the meat in the slow cooker veggie pot pie. This is so good and flavorful. Those biscuits on the top add a really nice touch. And then like I said before, you could use different veggies if you'd like. You could add veggies, subtract veggies, really anything. And then I did serve this alongside of a side salad and I used this balsamic vinaigrette as the dressing. Now we're making this coconut curry. So to my slow cooker, I'm going to add in two 13 ounce cans of coconut milk. Any brand of coconut milk will work. Then you're going to want to add in about a tablespoon of minced garlic. Next, two tablespoons of yellow curry powder. Then you're going to want to add in about a teaspoon of chili powder, one tablespoon of dried basil, a tablespoon of salt, a teaspoon of pepper, and then one diced red onion. Give this a really good Stir, and as you will see, this will change colors into kind of like a beautiful golden color. Now you're going to want to add in about two large chicken breasts and then coat the chicken breasts in the sauce. Cover this with a lid and cook this on low for about six to seven hours. Once the cooking time is up, your chicken will be nice and cooked through. Just remove the chicken to a plate and you're going to want to shred it up. As you see, it is super duper easy to shred. It is nice 
nice and shreddable and then add the shredded chicken back into the slow cooker and you'll notice the sauce is pretty thin so we're going to want to thicken it up we're going to make a cornstarch slurry so in this little bowl I have a tablespoon of cornstarch to the cornstarch I'm adding a tablespoon of cold water give this a stir and then add this right into your slow cooker let this continue to cook on low for about 20 minutes this will help thicken the sauce this is such a unique, fun meal to make in the slow cooker. It is so unbelievably good, and that sauce is amazing. I could pretty much just drink it, but we served this with steamed white rice and a little bit of naan bread on the side to dip into that sauce. Now we're making this cowboy casserole. So the first thing you're going to want to do is brown up some ground beef. I have about a pound of ground beef right here. I am just going to cook up on my stove. As you see, my ground beef was a little bit frozen still. I forgot to take it out in time to thaw. But once my ground beef was cooked through, I removed any excess grease in the pan. Then I added it right into my slow cooker. Next, I'm going to add in about three large russet potatoes into my slow cooker. I did peel and dice those potatoes. Now I'm adding in a 14 ounce can of diced tomatoes along with a 15 ounce can of kidney beans. Next add in a 10 ounce can of cream of mushroom soup and a tablespoon of minced garlic. Now I'm going to add in one yellow onion that I diced along with my seasonings, a teaspoon of salt, half a teaspoon of pepper, and oh my, did you see how much oregano I just accidentally added in? It just dumped out. I forgot that I didn't have the little all stopper thing on my oregano but you know mistakes happen sometimes I just took some out but now I'm adding in a teaspoon of paprika and I'm going to give this a stir this will cook on low for about six to seven hours Now that the cooking time is up, I am going to give this a stir, and seriously, my house was really smelling good. I'm going to add in 3 fourths cup of shredded cheddar cheese, let the cheese melt down, and then you could serve this up. This is such a hearty, delicious meal. It is just like comfort food to the max for me. This meal also reheats super well in the microwave if you have any leftovers. Hold up guys, I have a big announcement. I just started a Pinterest account where I have been sharing hundreds of my recipes. So you gotta go check it out. I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.